This is Crudge. He's gone sub eight at an Ironman. Once. And he's gonna tell you how to do it. Video, we're going to give you some tips. We're titling it How to Go Sub 8 because obviously Will went sub 8. I did go sub 8 on debut, man. Debut, fastest, fastest British debut ever. Yeah, so we titled it like that. Obviously, you that's like how to go sub 8 with a full time job. As yeah, well. so how to go sub 8 with a full time job. Obviously, a lot of you watching aren't going to be able to do that. Um, but never say never. All of the tips never are never. still worthwhile. Yeah. Are still warranted. Even if you want to go, let's say sub 10, sub 12, sub 15. What's the cut off for an Ironman? Sub 18. Sub 18. Sub 18. Even if you want to go sub 18, these tips will still apply. It's just Will does it a little bit quicker than most people. The thing is, uh, it's all relative. We all like to put the same effort in. Yeah. And I, I genuinely have always said this: the people that are coming in are like. 16 hours have it harder than us. Oh, 100%. Because it's like, if you're on your feet for that long, respect is horrific. Them a lot more, yeah. Absolutely horrific. Yeah. So, That's with good, that yeah. being said, Will's got a full time job, he got a sub eight. We're going to ask him how he did it and any kind of tips, helpful tips that he can give you guys so you could try and do it or smash your PB anyway. You can do anything. You can, anything is possible <laughs> when you, you believe. Get you get to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most improved descender of the camp is Matt. 100%. Fucking impressive. Guy up front with the massive calves, you can't really miss him. <laughs> <laughs> and amazing shorts. Yeah. <laughs> we share shorts in this camp. <laughs> yeah. We don't wash either. <laughs> we share shammy. Yeah. <laughs> Trust and love the process. Trust and love it. Basically, you just gotta learn to love getting fit. Yeah. It kind of is just like a get fit to get fit kind of stay. Yeah. Um, if you don't love just like exercising and actually doing training, it's kind of pointless at the end of the day. You gotta roll with it and just sort of trust that on race day. But what your coach has put together is actually going to come through. Yeah. Or what you have or put together. Or you've done yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be part of the uh, the England camp with like Alex E and all that. And um, Rick Velati, head coach, had this say. He just had like this trust the process saying. Yeah. And I just did not understand it at all. Yeah. Did not get it. But after doing our my training, I kind of get it yeah. now. It's you just got to like commit to like the 16 weeks out. Yeah, you should learn to love it. Yeah, love it. Do you also say, yeah. don't worry too much about overall hours, right? Yeah, you just got, you got to find the time, haven't you? Yeah. It's like everyone's got a different amount of time. Yeah. So when I went, when I went sub, what, sub eight at Raw, yeah. I was sitting at like 12 hours a week. Yeah. Which for like most pros, it's just like nothing. absolutely fuck all. Yeah, it's nothing. But it's just all the time I had. And then like five hours of those a week were literally me commuting yeah in and out of work half an hour each way with a rucksack yeah um so with I, people who can only do 10 to 12 hours a week let's yeah. say would you said suggest more intensity oh, 100 right there and you go. Like, with 10 to 12 hours a week i don't think the whole 80 20 really works no. this is like i'm obviously not a sports scientist but personal opinion yeah um you just don't have the time no you kind of you got to get the intensity yeah, you got to get 10 yeah well yeah for me that works yeah but we like i have a pretty big base of training so yeah. maybe that works for me yeah maybe not so much for someone who's like brand new to it yeah cool but, yeah tidy Hundred and ten km. We're at a Mackey's. We're two K from home. <laughs> Tip number two. Tip number two. The adaptable. The adaptable. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what and to say. On that? I actually don't know what to say. Um, well, you basically like it's always going to go wrong, inevitably. Like stuff will go wrong, so you've just got to be able to just like crack through and get on with it. And kind of just thrive in the adversity. Life gives you lemons, get mackies. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's true though. 
Shit will always go wrong. Yeah. And you've got to be able to do it. Like I actually had it in Ironman Portugal. So for the whole of this summer, I've been riding a bike that was a single speed. So I was doing like, I was doing like 12 hours a week after off like throughout the summer on a single speed. Um, Cause I couldn't afford to get my gears fixed. <laughs> Sad, but it's <laughs> life. <laughs> Bit of adversity. Um, and then in Portugal, I literally pulled through on Patrick Langer to do a turn and my gears, my DI2 died. Mm -hmm. So then I had like 80K um, in the single speed, but I was prepared for it. I'm adaptable. Be adaptable. There you go. And in training, do you have an example of that in training? Um, in training? When you so like something comes up or... Session's a bit hard, just sack it off. <laughs> <laughs> know your body, mate. That's true, actually. That's, that is a good one. You've got to know your if, body. If the pool's 20 minutes away, just don't swim. <laughs> That's a whole difference. Swimming. <laughs> swimming in me is a whole different story. Yeah. I don't swim. So, assuming you work on like Slack or Microsoft Teams or something, make sure you've got the app on your phone. Every, so the Slack, every 15 minutes, if you open the app, it will show you as active. So just Swift, like, put yourself a reminder, just open it up. Uh, nobody will know any better. <laughs> and in Strava, go into privacy controls, make sure someone has to request to follow you. And before you let them follow you, check if they actually work at your company. If they do, don't let them. Um, they don't need to know this stuff. It's very practical Sorry. advice. Hybrid working. Yeah. Woo. Can I get the race course one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So also um, be careful and like, think about what race course you're going for. So if you're looking to go to Sub 8, uh, South Africa is a pretty good one, the swim's usually cancelled, so you'll probably be like an hour ahead already. Um, so it's basically like a sub nine, really. That's what, that's what Dan Flues did, wasn't it? Yeah. Dan Flues just went to one that didn't have the swim. I mean, he swam really? like 30 minutes, yeah. yeah. Easy. Go for um, cancel Look swim. after your equipment, make sure, you know, you don't want to be spending time if you're trying to go sub eight, you know, replacing bikes and stuff, so you get some insurance. Uh, lack of code in the comment section below. <laughs> like and share. <laughs> Nutrition as well, so don't, if you heard of HelloFresh, uh, again, somewhere in the comments. All the, all the discount codes are in the comments section below. So although Will does have a full-time job, Brett has a proper full-time job. <laughs> Will, Will is part-time. <laughs> Brett, Brett has a proper full-time job. <laughs> right, so Brett. One piece of advice, literally your golden tip for anything to do with training, how to get training in, or yeah, just how people can get better basically. My one tip would be time management. Make sure you know what you've got coming up the, day, the next day in terms of training. Also consider what work you've got on. So for example, if you go into the office, you know you've got to factor in your commute to the office, your commute home, actually how can you fit your training around that as well. Think about also the nutrition side of things, make sure you take your food in with you considering you may have a interval session in the evening, make sure you fuel properly throughout the day as well, but make sure you can plan as far ahead as possible to ensure that your week doesn't get derailed as a result of poor planning. I kind of disagree with some of it though. They what? Planning ahead. So for example, do as I say, not as I do. Will doesn't like planning. <laughs> but I, uh, so I don't, I have a coach, so Frel Ford helped me, but I wouldn't say he coaches me as such. Um, so I kind of do what Skipper does, like I have it in my head what I do in general yeah. and I just wake up, do what I feel like on that day. So if you wake up feeling shit, you just don't do it and you have an easier day. Yeah. Whereas if I'm feeling good, you just crack on for three weeks. And it's like I will, <laughs> I will periodise things like over time, yeah. but I don't have like a plan day to day. I literally, yeah. I literally wake up and see, yeah, what's what. There is that way of going about things. I, <laughs> I think from an, an aspect of full-time workers who have to think about other aspects of life yeah, such we as don't think about that. family <laughs> such as no, I guess you know, I'm, I'm family single. kids or kids like rubbish, you know yeah. actually single no kids for example I'm taking an hour lunch and actually back single no kids hint hint which is where it does yeah. work yeah if you're single if you're single if you don't, don't have do kids it. and you've got the flexibility to do it yeah um, if you're wifed if up you like Brett then um, actually, and you've got kids like Brett I ain't got kids wow you, you're a stepdad I don't know aren't you <laughs> 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 